Welcome everybody to the video. This is Darth Painkiller here. We have a very special moment now. I know, I know it's been a while. Uh, it's long overdue. Uh, but I said that I will be back one day and uh, here I am. And I have a pretty good reason. Darth fucking Malgus is coming to Swaga. I can't believe. This is the single most anticipated character. If you're a fan of the dark side, you should probably know, we should have a pretty good understanding of the importance of Darth Malgus. Let me just jump back to the game and enjoy listening to the nice music in the background. So, you might remember that was a big fan of the Sith Empire when it came out. So this is basically the team that I used for, I think, as long as two years in the arena. So I basically refused to use any light side teams whatsoever, so I will stick to my Sith Empire, so they are very well geared, very well modded, let me just briefly walk through them, so in the previous setup Darth Revan was, was your guy, he was extremely versatile leader in every game mode basically, uh, obviously he was mostly used to utilize nowadays in GC, in TB, but now uh, a new, new era begins because it's been a while I can't really remember but I think that Sith Empire was released back in uh, 2019 if I remember correctly or maybe even 18 correct me if I'm wrong guys but uh, let me just say yeah everything is recording okay right so originally when this team came out I only remember that I was extremely hyped so that, that was the first character that I decided to whale in Galaxy of Heroes and it was kind of expensive. I remember that I spent a hundred or two hundred bucks which like in my case of close to free to play person was quite a lot and oh boy I was so frustrated when I realized that after unlocking Darth Revan this is just a half of the team because if you remember correctly after unlocking Darth Revan with you know obviously HK, Bastila and uh, can't really remember, but I believe that in the requirements we have all the older public fools, right? So both the dark side and the yeah, and the light side. So there was uh, Candorus Ordo for sure, Cartonasi uh, and so on. So pretty useful characters back in the time. Now not so much. Cart is mostly used to light for the ship. Candorus is great for for the Mandalorian team, but uh, all, all in all, the older public is is trash. Uh, Revan, Jolie and Bastila are utilized with Jedi since a very long time. They are a very good and viable team, but when it comes to the Sith Empire, for the long time it was the best non-Galactic Legend uh, team. So the best best legendary unlock, basically. I would say that on par with the light side version of Revan. Uh, obviously with the addition of Darth Malak, this... Uh, their satellite, uh, uh, this uh, you know capability of the team went even even higher, and it was pretty much mandatory you know to counter light side Revan other bullshit that uh, CG served us back in the time. So I was extremely pissed off. Probably not only mine that I invested so much time and money to unlock that Revan in the first go because you, it it was like quite different experience uh, a few years ago. You had to you know. It was a classic 5 or 7 star unlock legendary event, so you had to basically um, just go to the journey to show you, because probably not all of you remember this. All the prayers, they sure they sure do, because that was our bread and butter back in the time. So if you look at those legendaries, uh, Galactic Legends, this is something new that was introduced, I believe, uh, one or one and a half year ago with like three different rounds, the last one being Lord Vader and uh, Master Kenobi, but when it comes to the solo journeys, we have a tiers, right? So this is the legacy stuff that CG delivered uh, back in the 2016, 17, you know, all those uh, old school, old fashioned events for unlocking Palpatine, Yoda, uh, Tron, R2D2, BB-8. Right now this is nicely grouped and visualized with this journey guide. So you probably remember uh, how big was the struggle to get all of those characters, to meet the prerequisites, to complete the 
uh, events that were very very hard. I remember for the Death Raven. Uh, for Death Raven, it was kind of okay when it comes to the difficulty level because it required pretty good character already. So no no bullshit characters to gear up to to level up. So HK, Bastilla, Candros, they were all uh, used later on with the squad and. What can I say? Darth Revan was always my favorite character in Star Wars universe, not only in this game, but in general he was a perfect Sith, or even the combination or a character who utilized both the dark side and the light side of the Force. My personal favorite, so I was pumped, I was hyped to the, to the, to the limit. Then obviously I was frustrated with this Darth Malak unlock, but you know, I missed the first round because it was for ways only. So I was extremely pissed off. Wait a sec, where is this? Yeah, here we go. A next tier unlock Turf Malak. And as you can see, it required all those characters that were kind of necessary for for initial Darth Revan event, plus Darth Revan. So it was double the investment just to milk the waves and you know piece of the player base. But should you finally unlock Darth Malak? Oh boy. He's such a monster. Actually, I wish I had geared him up uh, and relic to R8. Can't really do this as of now, but all I can say that this this guy, up to till t t till today, he can solo like 90% of Galaxy of Heroes team in GAC, and I don't think it's an exaggeration. So he basically struggles with some composition timeout teams, but all kind of uh, you know foolish scoundrel. Uh, Phoenix, I don't know, Bounty Hunters, all, all those teams with pretty good synergies can be soloed by, by Duff Malak still. So it's very, very versatile and useful character. I would say that he's as useful as as what Tambor to me, just for soloing purpose. It's like Wampa, it's like Nest, uh, no brainer, kind of a necessary character if you want to succeed in JC. So, after this, they introduced Gas, who obviously was a bit better than Sith Empire, but if you remember correctly, a well-modded Sith Empire team with Malak could have uh, countered Gas, and it's I believe it's still valid up to date. It's not that easy because Gas was uh, buffed, basically, or they said that it was nerfed, but for me it was a buff. So it's kind of on par, and obviously Jedi Luke, it's, it's hard to compare because he can also solo so many things, he's such a great leader, but I believe that Darth Malak event was the th toughest uh, Galaxy of Heroes event uh, ever, period. So when you finally got the Sith Empire, you were really like in a very good place, in a very good position, because back in the time Sith Empire was the strongest team. With the addition of GLs, it was obviously designed to, you know, to avoid such a situation that the non-GL team can counter GL, but uh, Sith Empire was a perfect counter to Jedi Master um, look, if you remember. It was nerfed, you know, uh, or Master Luke was buffed to avoid this kind of counter, but still, uh, you probably know that very well modded Sith Empire can deal with all kind of Jedi teams like nobody's business. So this is for me already like... Uh, such a strong recommendation if the non-GL team can counter a GL team then it's a win for you in every fucking situation so it's a really team that you need to have it's great on offense in GAC it's probably even better on defense if you look at the GAC stats you know the top meta for GAC I bet that the Darth Revan is in the, fur, in the top 10 uh, in the like you know all the, all the teams as of now but this was the past Darth Revan is already a uh, Legend a History just will walk you through my team modded for speed, generally as much health and protection, lots of damage. HK not so useful nowadays, but still he can do some job, especially against Jedi because he can basically one shoot, one shot all of them, maybe except of uh, Master Luke. Uh, but he was such a powerful character back in the time. Malak is a no-brainer. We already know that. Mine is modded for tenacity, that's why he can solo so much stuff. What's worth mentioning that 
you really uh, he's looking for as much protection as, as you can possibly give him because then it's translated to health so he becomes the monster with the drain force with the uh, rock solid defense this is a really tough character to, to beat Bastila is all about speed and potency <clears throat> uh, speed to go first and then apply the tons of debuff with fear with Corrupted Button Meditation, you probably are familiar with this stuff. If you ever played with Sith Empire, you know what I'm talking about. Still up to date, such a great team, Sith Marauder, hard hitting character that scales damage with the debuffs on both allies and, and enemies. Very useful character to have, and Sith Trooper, which, who was renamed to eventually to Sith Empire Trooper, uh, one of the best tanks in the game period. So, I'm intentionally skipping Sith Assassin, who's not very widely used. She, I believe that she, it, it, it is she, not he, uh, is a pilot. So, one day probably she will be more important when the Sith capital ship will arrive, and I believe that it will happen soon with the uh, Ravager from Nihilus. But, let's focus on <laughs> the subject of today's uh, video, Darth Malgus. Oh boy, I see the kit reveal, I'm not gonna go through this, you have a ton of videos by Anno, by other content creators. This is a monstrous kit, it is specifically designed to counter everything, plus to some extension even the GLs in given circumstances, in given conditions, and I believe that he will be extremely viable in Grand Arena. If I remember correctly, there is one Omicron. We don't want to lose time to discuss this kit now, but just TLDR, he will be a monster. He will be like Marlock on steroids. Combination of probably Malak and Revan with a very powerful lead that brings uh, a lot of viability to already a very great team. You know, 50% mastery. 30 speed, 80% critical avoidance, oh boy, I don't even want to read it now, I don't want to get too high, but it, on paper, it looks great, obviously we need to see this in practice, but time will tell, uh, my bet is that he will be the best non-GL team, so he will um, upscale the old Dart uh, Revan team, like to the very limit, so potentially on par with some GLs with this Omicron. But, how to unlock Darth Malgus, uh, you might be interested. You probably know the answer. It's Conquest. And it really sucks. I need to admit, that the last 5 or 6 seasons of Conquest, I intentionally... I skipped them all. I did the absolute fucking minimum, just to unlock the second or third crate. Maybe because I was fucking lazy, or maybe because it's so fucking boring. It's, you know, it was cool when we had this game mode delivered for the first time. I remember I unlocked Commander Sukatana for the first time. Then, the, you know, after the first few rounds, the hype was gone. With uh, Maul, it was problematic. I had to spend some money, some crystals to unlock him, because I was not able to force myself to play the conquest and, you know, aim for this red crate, which is crucial if you want to unlock those conquest rewards in the first go. See, so if you look at the conquest, and bear in mind that the current conquest is already has already started like uh, nine days ago, so you still have five and a half day, as you can see with this counter. If you haven't started yet, then you might be in trouble to unlock the, you know, even the middle crate. So if you look at the progression of the rewards in conquest, it it really uh, it's encouraging you to play frequently to refresh this conquest bullshit energy that's taking that's burning our precious resources right so if you want to aim for unlock of Darth Malkus after the third conquest which is like the, the earliest you can get you, you should probably start right away which means one week ago and do this very like you know on a day day by day basis if you need some plan on, on this one Go and check the uh, Pit Dynasty channel. He has a great tool, you know, the planning tool as he did for the GC. He now created a 
web browser tool for planning the you know your, your compass journey which teams to use to you know to optimize your energy to unlock as many feats as you can possibly can in the given days so right now as you can see i made already pretty good progress with this conquest i'm ready with the 450 crate which already brings you 50 shards of marble so it's an easy calculation uh, i'm skipping the conquest pass for now i'm gonna focus on this later but if you are aiming to unlock uh, Darth Malgus after the third conquest and this will be the time where a lot of Darth Malgus characters will be unlocked by lots of players because he's, you know, such a hyped character I would say you really need to aim for this max crate each and every time so three conquest runs in a row you need to get this maximum crate of 90 shards uh, which gives you 270, right? 3, three times 90 uh, gives you 270, so as we know, 330 unlocks uh, creates a gap, right? So we have 60 more, but there is a possibility to, to buy uh, 20 shards each conquest with the Java node. So basically, each conquest you need to unlock the maximum amount of Darth Malgus shards in the shop, which is 20 for 4 times uh, 5 shards per 525 conquest uh, currency and this gives you the the perfect combination right 270 plus 60 there you go you have 330 and Darth Malgus is yours it's, uh, it's e easier said than done I, I, I can tell you getting maximum crate three, t three times in a row it's like a month and a half of working on it so it's it's like a fucking job yeah you need to log in every day you need to keep up with the energy What's more, you won't be able to unlock the maximum crate without uh, refreshing the conquest energy. I believe that you, you probably need to uh, uh, refresh this energy at least three days a day, which costs you 150 in total. So it's already a big investment of time, of resources, and lots of feats are very frustrating as you will realize in a few minutes. So the best thing you can do actually Okay, so if you're a die-hard fan, you know that you can spend dozens of hours in this next six weeks. Just make sure that you're making this progress each day, plan everything ahead, possibly using those tools from Pit Dynasty. Shout out to this guy, is an amazing content creator, by far the best strategy guides uh, in YouTube for Galaxy of Heroes. Highly recommend his resources. Uh, so if you really want to get Malgus on the, on the first go, you need to aim for the max crate, uh, no other option on the table whatsoever. So then you will need to supplement this with the bonus shards, both in the shop. So starting from the sector 2, after the, each mini boss, you will have a mini Java node. So let, let's see, this is the mini boss, some Mandalorian dude, and after that you should see, like, the first Java node after the mini boss will have an option to buy Darth Malgus shard for a reasonable price of 525 uh, currency of conquest. So just make sure that you are not spending this currency to for anything else because you will be missing this. So if you if you don't have any stockpiled currency from the last conquest, if you, for example, accidentally bought some gear or some other bullshit rubbish stuff. You are, in, you are in trouble, but if you're like me and you already know that you won't be able to unlock three maximum crates in a row because you have a fucking private life, you are planning holidays, you need to take care of your family or you are a busy man in general, uh, just listen to my strategy. So since I really want to unlock that Malgus uh, in six weeks, I decided to work like very meticulously on, on this, so each day according to some kind of schedule, refreshing this uh, Conquest energy three times a day. So let me just refresh it. I think it's a third. Okay, I won't be able to refresh it anymore and we need to burn this energy. And believe me, this will be a really quick process. So, uh, in order to succeed, if you don't, if you already know that you won't be able to max out the, the three next Conquest, I highly, highly recommend buying the Conquest Pass. I know, it's a 
it's a lame practice to you know force players to pay for some additional share but hey the the first conquest pass which i already bought and it's activated as you can see cost 10 bucks it's not much although you need to bo bo buy this pack at least once because for each conquest there is a separate pass so at the very worst scenario, if you know that you won't be able to keep up with you know, unlocking Death Magus, you need to invest 30 bucks. Not, not a tra tragedy, I would say, comparing to you know the amount of time and money I spent for unlocking Revan and uh, Malak. It's like nothing, right? You probably spend 30 bucks on I don't know PS4, 5, or Xbox game from time to time. So why not investing in uh, in this game and supporting uh, content creator? But do not ever, ever think about buying this bullshit compass pass. So, an upgrade, it's, by the way, it's converted to my local uh, currency, which is Polish Zwoty, but this is, this is fucking expensive. Uh, it, I already paid 10 bucks, um, which is to translate to almost 50 PLN for me, and it's, what is more, it's also asking me for another 20 bucks, which is 95 Zwoty, to upgrade to the Conquest Pass Plus which is total bullshit. It gives you the feature to, you know, to swap the disc without uh, really paying anything, which is handy, which is a really handy feature, but uh, this is a quality of life feature. This is not something that you should be paying for. And this reminds me of predatory practices from the MMORPG games, even the, the Old Republic, and that's why I'm not playing those games uh, since ages. Stamina regeneration is also really important because each battle burns 10% of stamina from your character and then you need to wait so if you start doing those battles in the like second week like from now you probably won't be able to make it just because of the missing you know stamina you won't be able to regenerate this stamina fast enough and it gives you some interesting dark loyalty disc but from my experience those purple discs are, are, are pure shit it's a horse shit basically it, you know, it burns 4 slots out of 12, those slots are really precious, gives you some kind of uh, overpowered bonuses, but you can achieve very similar effect with, you know, other uh, other disc. I remember that, but this one, for example, gives you mass assist for non-leader dark side allies, yeah, if you are using dark side allied leader, they will all be assisting uh, in a very specific circumstances, right? When when the leader goes and uses any attack. So this this is I believe that there was already a disc that was triggering this effect. I can't remember the name, but it was also the purple one. Leader resolve, I believe. I was using it in the last conquest, but it's kind of expensive. Don't buy this, just skip it. Fuck you CG, we are not paying for the quality of life features, period. But if you decide to buy the first pack, you will see that uh, apart from the regular rewards that you are claiming for progressing through the conquest, from time to time you are getting extra rewards and those are usually some small packs of gear, odd, or which is more important for us, this is uh, the either TIE Interceptor shards, this is, this is basically the reward from the last conquest, where I really had to force myself to unlock it with 5 stars. And the Darth Maltus shard. It's not much. I believe that in total it's 20 shard per per each conquest. It's basically. Wait a sec. Let me just do the quick math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So ten times two. It's 20 additional shards. So. It really, it, 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 should you decide to buy this Conquest Pass, it really makes sense to make sure that you are claiming the maximum crate or you, you, can, you can go as far as to the last reward to claim it because then it's, it's the best bang for your buck, right? So given the fact that you can get additional 20 shard from uh, Conquest Pass, now you can see that you have some room of failure, some room of, you know, neglection if you can't do this on daily basis. So you are like 60 shards ahead. So maybe you won't be able to um, reward uh, you. Sorry, to get the maximum crate, or maybe you won't have sufficient currency to to buy 20 shard of Darth Malgus each conquest from from the sector nodes, like here. As I'm 
already told you, each node starting from 2 till 5 will offer you 5 additional shards in a Java node. So if you know that you might struggle to unlock this like purely free to play, just pay the 10 bucks. At least give it a chance, pay it once or you can always pay it later with the second or the third one. Okay, so this is th this is the plan. Uh, I think it's pretty simple. Now uh, onto the feet, because uh, there are some pretty irritating feats in this conquest. So if you look at the global feats, and you really need to uh, complete most of them if you want to reward the or get the maximum reward, and bear in mind that the maximum, the difference between the maximum and the a prior to maximum crate is quite significant. Not mentioning those rewards that can be claimed in between, but the maximum reward crate gives you 90 shards of Black Malgus, while the the previous one gives you only 65. So it's you know it's 25 less. It's it's quite significant. So in the scenario where you are buying conquest pass three times, it's an easy math. Uh, you will be missing if you will, if you unlock the this crate, this 53 crate. Uh, 530 crates, sorry, uh, three times, uh, you will still need, if I remember, if I count correctly, 25, 75 shards of, uh, 70 additional, 75 additional shards of Dark Malgus, so you can either buy 60 uh, from the store, from the Java node, and buy one conquest pass, or I don't know, buy three conquest passes, and just add, uh, just buy additional 15 shards from the nodes, which is basically just three nodes for five shards each. So just align the strategy to your, uh, you know, to your timing, uh, how much time you have, you can dedicate for this, uh, how much money you can spend on this, yeah, because also an investment into the fucking mobile game and uh, lots of players just refuse to pay for this. I completely understand, but. Uh, in my honest opinion, I think that it's it's those ten bucks is a good investment, especially uh, if you think of this as a as a policy. Uh, should you fail to to complete the maximum crate, all right. Uh, one more thing that I want to discuss because this video is already is too long. I'm always forgetting about this. YouTube is not really uh, favoring the long videos, by the way. Uh, these are the global feeds. Uh, I'm gonna discuss them in the in the next video, but just to highlight what's what's the most important in this season. Uh, apart from the standard feats like uh, beat the you know the X amount of enemies, this is global feat that will be completed by itself. If you proceed with uh, with the with the battles throughout the nodes from one to five. Uh, this is interesting and this gives you actually the premonition data disk which is required later on. So you basically need to complete 20 battles without leader. I have broken my chains, I actually quite like this name. It refers to to the Sith basically, to the Sith uh, ideas and vision of, of life. So the easier uh, way to get it and I will cover this in the next video is to just use you know the, the strong squad and just swap the leader with one random character so for example if you go with Sith Empire just switch a uh, Revan and Malak go with Malak lead which obviously gives you no bonuses but then you are completing this feat and by the way by any means you should look for a situation where you can comp complete the multiple uh, feats with one battle so you can do this combination of you know no leader uh, for example, Synth Empire and kills from Darth Malak and Revan. So those first three, uh, you can work towards the completion of these in a single battle, basically, if you plan this correctly. And if you really want a, a solid plan on, you know, how to unlock this, uh, go to ba Beat Dynasty channel. He has a pretty detailed videos on each sector node, each feed, team composition, and his planner is just you know it's just something out of this planet I'm, personally i'm not gonna use this because it's not fun for me to to you know to play the game and to, to you know to, to treat this as a you know as a work or some kind of project to deliberately uh, check the performance and tick marks each day uh, 
I'd rather have everything in my mind and then I'm following my, my, my internal schedule and I pretty much know what I'm doing because I know the kids, I know what, what's required, but if you struggle in long-term planning, uh, just do it with his tool or on a piece of paper in the old-fashioned way and you will find me later. Uh, I will give you the link to the Bit Dynasty channel in the description. Highly recommend once again. This dude is just a great resource when it comes to Galaxy of Heroes strategy guides. Alright, so other global feats. This is pretty straightforward, so you need to defeat 100 enemies with Malak and Revan. And believe me, this is not so easy. I already defeated 54 enemies, but uh, it need to be the, the final hit need to be delivered by Malak or Revan. So if you have Bastila in the squad or HK and they, you know, throw a big bomb from HK or an AOV from Bastila and kill entire squad, this gives you zero progress. So you, you really you gotta be really careful and know the kids what you are doing. Measure of admiration is probably the most irritating feat for when it comes to global feats in this conquest. No one really likes to play the full old republic with you know not only Jedi but you need to supplement with two more characters because we have uh, uh, pretty much everyone has Jedi Knight Raven uh, geared up and relic, uh, Jolie, Bastila, but then you need to add either Kandaru, Zalbar, Mission, T3. They are not very useful characters, so probably you have it you have them under geared, so it can be a struggle, but I will show you the ways how to do it very easily. War Made Manifest, another Sith related feat to win 20 battles with Darth Nihilus and Darth Sion, this is important. Uh, this is a mandatory thing to add both Nihilus and Sion in one squad. So this can be achieved by just throwing Sith Trio teams or even a mixed team of Sith Empire and Sith Trio. Uh, rather uh, easy thing to complete but you need to make sure that uh, it's 20 battles so you need to start it uh, accordingly you need to plan it ahead right because if you try to do it on the very last day you won't be able to complete it due to the stamina regeneration thing worst case scenario you might need to buy some items to refresh the energy and by the way in my conquest experience I'm hardly ever using those uh, those items you know the the one of items that you can use to boost your stats or regen the stamina it's it's like the when you really don't have a choice then you probably need to do it but you can very well complete all the co if you have a good roster a wide roster with some exception of a very tough battles with good data disk you can complete this without any consumables whatsoever and I highly recommend that it's more fun this way. Uh, this is the way. I have broken my chains. This is to win 20... Sorry. So this is the feat to... Alright, got it. So this is kind of a continuation of Vision of Doubt, where you receive the Premonition data disk. And with I have broken my chains... Yeah. So this is the natural continuation of, 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 of this feat. So, as you can see, there are some interaction between those feats, so you need to complete, like, sustained by rage. You need to first, like, kill 100 enemies with Malak and Revan, and then you will be granted by the power of the dark side. Uh, you will be granted the Dread Data Disk, which then is used to, to com com complete uh, one of those feats. So you really need to plan this carefully. I will give you my advice is on completing those feats. So that will be it for, for this video. I'm not gonna cover sector feats because it's a, it's another uh, topic and it's already a material for the whole whole video. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm gonna cover this uh, later today or tomorrow and what I can say, wish you good luck in unlocking Darth Malgus and just made the first build video. Peace guys. Cheers.